Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, my name is Gabriel Alvavera. I'm the principal here at L.C. Allen High School. Soy Gabriel Alvavera, el director aquí de la escuela de L.C. Allen. Really appreciate uh, all of you being here uh, this afternoon. I'm muy agradecido que todos estén aquí con nosotros. Uh, les voy a pedir para las personas que quieran la interpretación en español, uh, por favor, apachurren abajo donde está el globo que dice interpretación. Y este, Mayra, Mayra, si puedes dar una, un saludo con la mano, que va a estar ahí lista para traducir. Uh, just letting our Spanish-speaking population know that they can click on the little globe there for translation, and Mayra will be uh, translating uh, the presentation here today. <clears throat> I also like to give the opportunity for our other administrators to introduce themselves. So, uh, Ms. Crank, would you like to start off? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Crank, Assistant Principal. Mr. Lieberman. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mr. Lieberman. I'm the Vice Principal. Mucho gusto que todos estén aquí. All right. So <clears throat> we're all excited uh, to have your students back here on our campus on April 26th. Uh, and we are prepared, well, we're getting prepared to make sure that we uh, have everything ready, not only for them, but for our staff as well, and obviously for you parents as well. Um, wanna make sure that we can take this time to answer any questions that you might have, and at the same time also reassure you that uh, we're gonna be taking care of your students here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go through this presentation. I have already sent the presentation to you uh, via the Parent Square and uh, Soon, Ms. Crank will put it on the chat so you can have it as well. Um, we'll go over it. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand uh, or ask the questions in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. And then at the end of the presentation, we will also ask if there's any other questions. Okay? So let me uh, go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I did the uh, presentation in both English and Spanish on these um, on these slides for you. All right. Again, basically the agenda is to go talk a little bit about the uh, schedule, uh, talk about the stable groups, uh, the safety pro protocol videos that I'm going to show you them, but I'm not going to uh, present them. Uh, you can access them at your leisure and we will send the link for those videos as well and also the parent agreement contacts. All right, Oops, let me see, did I kind of go back? Okay, um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, what we do know is that while school will look very different than before the pandemic, obviously we're very excited to welcome your students back to our campus and just rest assured that safety is our number one priority here at LC Allen High School for your students. And I'll pass that one because I already went through it. I'll give you a second. And so that was, those were the videos, um, I think, and I've shared them with you as well, but feel free to, uh, to look them over again on our YouTube channel. Um, this is an example of our schedule. And as you can see, uh, it's a little complicated, um, but your students uh, who will be coming onto campus <clears throat> will either be in a group A or a group B. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lieberman, would you like to share with the folks about the group A and group B and kind of how they will come onto campus? Yeah, so uh, those students will be group A. Um, there's roughly about 160 group A students and roughly about 160 group B students total. They'll be coming in most of our, we've had a few that'll be here zero period. So they would be coming in a little bit earlier. Um, the rest will come in and be here by 8.30 to go in and they'll have three blocks. So they'll come in, their first class will be 8.30, 9.50. Then they'll go to third period class, as you can see from 10 to 11.20. And then they go to their fifth period class. I know that's confusing because it says first block, second block and third block, but on Monday and Thursday, that's first period, third period, and fifth period at those times. The A group only comes on Monday and Tuesday. 
The B group only comes on Thursday and Friday. Uh, they finish up with lunch from 1 to 1.35, and then they're pretty much done for the day, though there are some opportunities for them to get um, extra help if they choose to do that. And then that would be on Thursday and Friday. So um, Thursday yes, would be group, group A. B, group, B group's Thursday, Friday. Correct. Thank you. Um, other piece of that, just really quickly, you probably already know this, but in case you don't, uh, there is a limit in the class size. No classes can have uh, over 15 students. And at this point, the schedule is all set up that we do not have any class sizes larger than 15. Thank you, sir. Oops, excuse me. Now, our stable groups. Uh, there are groups of students who will be working together in a particular class. This will not change. Again, like Mr. Lieberman said, the stable groups will have no more, technically 16 if you include the adult in the room as well. Areas will be provided for students to socially distance during breaks. <clears throat> So during their break time, uh, they can come outside and they'll be socially distant and make sure that they are wearing their mask while they're um, within a group setting. Again, students will remain masked unless eating or drinking. Now here's a map of our school, bird's eye view, uh, or maybe, uh, <clears throat> yeah, bird's eye view, I've got one in English and Spanish. We recommend that you drop off your student <clears throat> at the nearest entrance to the school that is closest to their classroom. So if you can see here, for example, if your student is a uh, has music first, you drop them off here. If your student is PE, you would drop them off here. And if your student has any class in the R buildings, M and N, you would drop them here or back here in the back. You're more than welcome to drop them at any part of our campus. I would recommend also that you find out what is the last class that they have and whatever classroom is their last class, that's where you would drop them off. So if their last class was science or music, you'd, drop, you'd pick them up over here. Or if their last class was PE, you'd drop them off, excuse me, pick them up here and pick them up here as well. But please communicate with your student to find out what their first class of the day is and their last class of the day. <clears throat> now, the office uh, will be available by phone Monday through Friday between 7.30 and, 5, and 4 p.m. Uh, but it will technically be closed to parents. Um, again, we will be available in person on Wednesdays from 7.30 to 4 as well. You can also email us. Um, we'll put up our information uh, and put it in the chat if you have any questions at any time. <clears throat> Would you like to talk a little bit about the COVID safeties, uh, Sarah, for our families? Yes, thank you. So. <clears throat> We are socially distancing, and that means six feet apart. Um, this works for our little guys too, just stretching out their arms help. And then of course, there we have a three month supply of gloves and masks and gowns for our staff. And then there will be extra masks in each classroom. So each classroom will have masks and sanitizer. There will be a washing station for washing hands. And students will be given their snack at snack time. They will stand about or sit six feet apart to eat when they have their masks off. And then they'll put their masks back on after they eat. Our classrooms are completely sanitized after school so that they are fresh and clean for the next day. And then in between classes, there will be sanitizing, sanitizing wipes available to wipe off desks or any other um, uh, items that they have sat on or used. And the thing is though, each classroom will have individual items so that students won't be sharing anything as well. Um, if your child has any symptoms at all, uh, and I believe this is a further slide about the parents, uh, parent screener, 
then you would have to enter that when we get to the parent screener questions. So we're still saying stay home if you don't feel well and you can do that on the parent screener. And while your child is at school, if they start to feel sick, we have an isolation room tent that we can bring them to and then you will be given a phone call to come and pick up your child. If there is someone in the classroom who does leave, the entire classroom will empty out and be thoroughly sanitized. There are also vents in each classroom, um, uh, I'm sorry, fans and um, continuously running so that there's ample airflow, doors and windows will be open as well. Thank you, Ms. Craig. So here is the daily health screener. That is, should be on your Parent Square app. I highly recommend for you to get the Parent Square app. It makes it really easy. Um, as you can see by um, this picture, whether it's your phone or whether it's a computer, you, there's a little orange uh, area there that you just click in and you can answer for all your children and then you would submit it <clears throat> and then you would repeat for all of the in-person days. If your student's not gonna be here in person, you don't have to do it. Only if they were coming for in-person. All right. Um, within the um, presentation that I sent all of you, there are some videos, again, regarding hand washing, coughing, and sneezing protocols. Please feel free to go over those. Um, these are really more for little kids. I think for our big kids and our high school kids, I think they understand. So I don't think we need to go through these. Stop me, the spray. There we go. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, the isolation tent. <clears throat> Again, once we get into the isolation tent, a student with a temperature of 100.4 or higher and or with symptoms consistent with COVID-19 will be taken to the isolation tent and observed until they are picked up. The isolation tent attendant will call the family for immediate pickup. Emergency contacts may be called. So if we can't get a hold of a parent, the emergency contacts will be um, contacted. Students then will be required to stay home until a negative COVID test is obtained or until 10 days have passed since symptoms onset and be fever free for 24 hours without medication. Again, that's the worst case scenario if one of our students has uh, some symptoms while they're on campus. Is there anything else maybe that I missed, Sarah, regarding that? You good? I think we're good, yes. It's just very important, of course, that we have your most current information on file so we can get a hold of you right away. Thank you, that's a great point. Please make sure that we have your most current information. All right. <clears throat> When our site uh, is able to reopen, when students are on campus for in-person testing, uh, in-person testing was gonna be conducted, but since we have gone to the orange, uh, are we still doing in-person testing with that, uh, Sarah? No, so we're not doing that at this point in time because we are not in the red anymore, or the purple, I'm sorry, the purple. And so that's not gonna be happening. But if for any chance we do go back, Hopefully we don't, we got our fingers crossed. Um, then if we do, we would be back to some in-person testing. Um, within the uh, PowerPoint that I sent you, there's also some resource pages that you can look at uh, to get more information. That includes our site-specific safety plan, our return to school plan, and then the COVID safety plan, as well as the San Jose City Schools Parent Guardian Health and Safety Agreement. And then on the bottom also has the Department of Public Health Consolidated School Guidance as well. Now, <clears throat> for those uh, students that are gonna be getting some food here, we're gonna have food available to us. Uh, we will have breakfast, which will be on grab and go um, format. Basically, we'll have like a, a station where they will just pick up their breakfast and then go to the class. Am I correct on that, Sarah? Yes, we will have snacks distributed. Um, they will not be eating in the classroom there. They'll be eating outside, yes. And then for lunch on campus, <clears throat> at the end of the day, the students will be able to take the lunches home with them because it would be the end of the day. Uh, and then we'll also be uh, giving out uh, seven day bundles for students. So it'd be lunches for seven days. Uh, and again, that would be uh, specifically 
um, on Mondays. And you see the schedule that we have there. And again, it's in the PowerPoint that I sent all of you. All right, that kind of covers everything. Uh, but I know that there's probably some questions that folks might have. And it looks like we have a couple questions here on um, that have been open. So let's see if we can answer that. How is the school bus going to work? <clears throat> well, uh, the school bus is going to be the same as it normally is during the non-pandemic era. Um, we're still working out the logistics on that. But more than not, they're going to be picking up at the same time they normally would pick up during the day. And there'll be more information coming out specific to the area that you live on that. Uh, will the back gate be open for drop off walking students? That's a good question. Uh, we are going to kind of meet for that as an administrator. The reason that we had not had it open prior uh, was because a lot of our students uh, tended to leave. And so being that this is a situation that's a little bit different and our, all of our students want to be here. Uh, there could be a possibility that we might have it open for uh, for the last five weeks of the school year. So that's a great question. Thank you. Um, we will definitely let the families know and students know if we will open that back gate in the mornings and then at uh, one o'clock for you when students leave. I'm going down here. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gibson. Yes, absolutely. Uh, please, uh, students and families, uh, please make sure that your students bring their Chromebooks with them every, well, not every day, the days that they're here present. Uh, I highly recommend that they charge it the night before. That way they don't have to charge it while they're here on campus. <clears throat> I think it's important that they get that um, and then make sure that, uh, that, yeah, they bring it with them so that they can be able to uh, start the school day uh, with their classes. <clears throat> Let me see. Is she going to be, a, that's a great question, uh, Guadalupe. <clears throat> Since my daughter's new student, is she going to be able to get to know the school? So we're gonna be working on a, uh, a video, hopefully tomorrow and we'll send it out by next week, kind of showing you the different buildings and the different classrooms. Um, that way you guys can get at least, especially for new students, an idea of what our campus looks like. Uh, but on that first day, there's going to be a lot of our uh, staff as well as other students there to help out uh, anybody that might seem lost. So we're going to be there to help out. Um, students who have been fully vaccinated, COVID symptomatic, will they have the same guidelines? Sorry, we want to take that one? Yes. Um we really don't have um, the ability to separate students and, and figure out who has a vaccine, who doesn't have a vaccine. Right now, even with vaccinated individuals, we are being asked to wear masks. And so that, that's the policy we are following at school as well. Thank you, Sarah. Um, how do we know if we are A or B, Mr. Lieberman? So, <clears throat> The district will be messaging that out probably at the beginning of next week. Um, you can also email me or check with your teachers or call and I can give you that information. But that the, the final, you guys should all be getting information from the district. It's, they're going to man send something out district wide to all the students through Parent Square. Thank you, Mr. Lieberman. And then uh, if we didn't get a Chromebook, will they have Will they lend us one? Yes, if you didn't get a Chromebook, uh, please come before the first day um, and see Johnny Ponchon, who is our student advisor. Um, I would assume that maybe if you didn't get a Chromebook, it could be that you're new to our school or um, uh, you might have came from Cook and or uh, what's the other school? Uh, Wright School. <laughs> so please come by and uh, see Johnny Ponchon. Will students be able to eat on campus? Sorry, you want to take that? Sure, yes, students will definitely be allowed to eat on campus. Yes, so as, as we, there, there is that break time when they will each have a snack. And so this, that snack will come from our food service or you can send them with a snack as well. We, we really don't want anyone sharing snacks, but they can bring their own and then we will also have one provided. That's a great question. 
All right. Uh, are there any other questions? I'm just trying to think, uh, team. Do you guys think anything off the top of your head? Oh, here we go. Uh, Adam is asking about zero period, Mr. Lieberman. How yeah. will it work? <clears throat> Adam, that is an excellent question. And at this point, we don't have a final answer, unfortunately. Um, there have been about, there was a task, uh, a group that came up with three proposals and that is still at cabinet for them to decide. What one of the proposals that was strongly suggested was that we can kind of individualize that to the site because each site has a very different zero period. For example, at LC, we have way more zero periods than any of the other high schools do. The kind of leading suggestion right now will be that zero period, like if you're in the A group, that you would actually go to zero period both Monday and Tuesday because it's a shorter period. It's a 40 minute block instead of an 80 minute block, but still not final and hopefully by next week our zero period teachers will get an answer and we can we'll make sure that that's out on your guys' Google Classrooms. Thank you Mr. Lieberman. Um, there's a question here Ms. Crank about water fountains. <laughs> we just talked about that today. We did yes. Um, so our, our water fountains are taped off because it's a sharing right and so we can't have that so we do encourage you to send your child with a water bottle um, we will have filling stations, uh, just, you know, kind of like those big Gatorade tanks there, they come and get water from. So we will have something like that set up so that students can refill their water bottles. And then we will also have to have something on hand in case students don't have a water bottle as well. So we don't, we're not going to let your child go without anything to drink. We'll, we'll make sure there's available water. Uh, Marta, how are you, Marta? Uh, she asked if this office will be closed but I have to pick up my child for an appointment. How will I do it? So the office actually will be physically closed, but we will have staff members in the office. So um, our staff member, Luis Rosales will be there. So if you come to the door, he will take care of you and uh, be able to give out information to you know, have your student come up to the front. So we'll take care of it that way. It's just closed to the public, but we will have people there uh, to address any concerns that you might have. I would probably also suggest that <clears throat> if you're going to pick up your daughter, maybe just give her a note. Uh, that way it gets taken care of before. And that way, once she gets out of class, we just call her out and she goes directly to your automobile. Um, okay, there's a question, uh, Mr. Lieberman. If the student, if my student is in the A group and will be on campus Monday slash Tuesday, what will they be doing on Thursday and Fridays? That is an excellent question. That is going to be somewhat dependent on your teacher. That said, almost every student's teachers are doing simultaneous, which means that they're working with their AB group as well as the distance learners at the same time. So generally, most of the teachers will do some sort of a Zoom concurrently during the time that the student is in class. So it might look like if you're in the A group on Monday, Tuesday, you're in with Mr. Gibson and he is Zooming the lesson at the same time for those that are not there. And that could be the B group and the C group, the distance learning group, both and vice versa. Also on the days you're not here, you will still have asynchronous learning just like you do on Wednesday. So you need to be getting on your Google classrooms and checking that out. Um, and your teachers will give you directions both in person on and on Zoom of what you still need to do. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Crank, will students wear a mask during PE? Yes, students will wear masks at all times. Right now, the only time a student will not have their mask off is when they are eating or drinking. Now, that being said, Sometimes a student needs to breathe. And so in that case, what I have seen a student do is they walk far away, they'll be like, and then they can put it back on, right? So we understand there's gonna be moments where they might need to do that, but overall, they're not to take their mask off at any time. Thank you, Ms. Crank. Mr. Lieberman, will there be a checkout at the front office for those students that have a period? 
That is an excellent question. We were talking about that in the admin team a little bit. Um, we're going to need to designate a spot for that. And it's very simple for those of you that have a fifth or sixth period free, um, because then that would be the end of the day and you would just go home at that point. But if you have a middle of the day, then we're going to have to kind of work something out with you guys because yeah we wouldn't have you leave campus if your free period is in a third period or a fourth period thank you mr we have miss uh lourdes who wants to know are they going to be the same teachers for the distance learning students and the hybrid students so again, uh, almost all of our teachers will be teaching simultaneously. What that means is they will be keeping their distance learners, the kids who are not on campus, as well as their uh, in-person learners, the A and B group. Um, I think at this point, there is only one or two teachers that that will not be the case. Um, so with those students, the distance learners would potentially get a sub but almost all of our teachers will have, will be teaching, almost all of our students will be staying with their same teachers, whether they're in-person or distance learning. Thank you. Uh, the times the students will be at school, we have the first block starting at 8.30 in the morning. Um, that would be the time that school would start each day for the present students. Let's see, what if you have a late school bus? Well, we're hoping we don't, but if by chance we do, 99.9% um, .9 of the time, those students um, are excused. Um, it's not their fault that they're late. So they are excused by the time they get to their class and we let their teachers know. Uh, when finals start, <clears throat> excuse me, will the periods be longer? Uh, do you know that, Mr. Lieberman? <clears throat> My guess is that we'll probably do the finals in the same bell schedule. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, even know how many of the teachers are planning on giving finals. Honestly, a lot of them are saying that they are not, but um, I don't think we'll change the schedule up. So probably what that will look like is Monday, Tuesday for the A group of that finals week will be their finals and Thursday, Friday will be the finals for the other kids and they'll have to be shorter finals. Yes, thank you, Ms. Bustamante for that reminder. Yes, unless your student is in zero period, um, the zero period they would start earlier, but we're still working that schedule out, trying to figure out what time that's gonna start. Um, but other than that, it would be 8.30. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. We can go find all those questions there. Um, will AP testing take place similarly to pre-COVID times? So most of the students have already gotten a uh, survey. They should have filled that out with their AP teachers. They've had a couple of options of what they can do. They can actually take the AP test at home online or they can come in and do pencil paper and so most of them should have already filled out which one they're going to do and should know which of those they're going to do um, the only exception is the ap spanish test does have to happen on campus but the other ones are at the option of the of the student all right well listen we just want to check if there's any other questions right now um, and if there isn't, uh, please feel free to contact us. We'll put our names in the chat, our email. Um, I'll put mine, there's mine. Um, also, Ms. Crank will put hers in, Mr. Lieberman will put his in, and uh, Ms. Sosa, if you could put yours in the chat in case anybody has any questions. And. Uh, Please feel free to email us at any time and we'll do our best to answer that. Can my child purchase Lobo's merchandise like mask in the office? Absolutely. I'm trying to find mine right here. You mean like this? Absolutely. Yeah, we have our masks. Yeah, you, uh, your child, your student can come talk to Michelle 
who's our business person, and she will uh, take care of you. They're ten dollars. Um, selfish plug for our, our masks, for sure. All right, there's uh, all our email there. If you have any other questions that come up at some point in time between now and the 26th, feel free to email us. All right. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate all of your time. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you. Bye, everybody. See you soon.